What kind of stuff have you been doing to keep yourself busy? And I've been getting clean, basically. That's that's basically what has been the um, main the main uh, time consuming thing for me is uh, getting sober. Being on the road was like I'd be copping drugs in every city, kind of a thing. Don't really remember much of it, and I was basically headed to death. It's about what I've been doing. When I was home for a long time, it's like I said that boredom sets in. So what better way to pass the time is to you know do drugs and get high and all that kind of stuff. And it wasn't, it wasn't even getting me high anymore. It was just getting me well. I'd wake up in the morning sick, you know, have to drive downtown in my car and be like thrown up in my lap, you know, because I'm just so physically ill. And it got to the point where I just couldn't do it anymore. You know, I saw my reflection in, um, in the oven one day when I was sitting on the kitchen floor, shooting up, trying to fix, trying to hit a vein, and I was vomiting all over myself, and it just was like the most appalling thing. I never could have pictured myself in any kind of state like that. And I knew I was just going to die. I mean, that's the basic, simple truth. You know, I'd be on the road, me and Eric would, uh, we'd take planes from, like, certain cities to go get drugs and come back. I'd be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's nowhere to score there. So I, what, what do you do? You fly to New York, you know, at 5 a.m. and come back right before the show. Otherwise, you can't play. And it was just picking apart at my life. It was picking apart at my playing. You know, I was basically an asshole to everybody, you know. And it just, it wasn't fun anymore. You know, it was a job. That was more of a job than the band. And I couldn't deal with that, you know. So I basically checked into a hospital and uh, been doing the same thing ever since. This denial thing comes into it. Like, I used to start off, I used to snort it and smoke it. And I told myself, okay, I'm not a junkie. You know, junkies are gutter people with rigs in their arms, and I'm not doing that, so I'm fine. And it turned into me doing that every day. But I still told myself I wasn't a junkie. Then I would start shooting up into, like, parts of my skin, you know. Well, I'm not hitting a vein, I'm not a junkie. There's no way. And then finally it, it just progressed into like fucking mainlining every single day. And I said, I'm not a junkie. I could stop this anytime. Which was, you know, just fucking lying to myself. You know, I'd be fucked up and I'd play a show, think I was ripping all night. I'd hear the tape back and it was just embarrassingly awful. You know, and um, so the next night in order to compensate for that, I would say I wasn't loose enough or something. I'd get more fucked up. And it just wasn't the way to go. I was like a zombie. Okay, as far as the creativity aspect, a lot of people are under this impression that it tends to take away from that. And I've personally found that, for instance, I thought I was a really weird guy, weird creative guy when I was fucked up all the time. But I found that it actually hindered that. You know, and I'm a lot weirder and more creative now than I ever was. You know, because it's just like all these channels are free to flow now. Whereas they were blocked. And I don't know how it is with other drugs. You know, people say, you know, they take acid or whatever. They, they see things that are amazing or whatever, you know. But for me, it was heroin, which is basically, it deadens your, your brain, you know. And just, it just stops the flow. And um, now I would say that it has a lot to do with the self-esteem of a person. You know, whether or not you think you're capable of this. Or if you need this help to get creative. I don't think that it's true. You got to work on yourself. I was so oblivious to everybody. You know, it was just like I didn't say anything to anybody. No one really said anything to me as far as I know, you know, but no one was complaining. I mean, we all have our little quirks about us, you know, you know, and so for me that was mine, you know. As far as what they're up to, I can't really talk about that, but, you know, I can tell you as far as, as I go, it was a nightmare. I mean, it just, it progressed from smoking pot when I was 11 years old to, you know, ending up in a trailer park in Reseda for a year, shooting heroin and coke every day. I've just got a lot of heavy things on my mind. Anyways, you ready? I'm, I'm very proud of the new record. It's just a vibe that goes with the record. A vibe that me and, and my girl together, I guess, came up with, actually, I can't take credit for it because it's a Los Angeles vibe. It's white kids mixed in with Mexican kids mixed in with black kids. The whole title, Ritual de lo Habitual, is just about people's rituals. Once again, you've got an album cover coming out and people are raging about it. Won't put it in this store and that store and want stickers on it and all that. I mean, how does that affect you? 
I think they all should die. I should go to hell and then see what fucking life is really like. Because I feel like what I did, what I, what I do with my artwork is the, is the few things in life that I have, I've loved. And I've gone after those things and I've tried to recreate them just, just kind of like an, like a shrine. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And it was it's it was never done to hurt people. I've never done things to maliciously hurt people or to be fascist or to be or to be um, prejudice. But people just don't leave you alone. If they're not trying to get your money, they're just trying to they're just trying to like get your fun. You know the problems we had with our management and uh, trying to get in new management and new lawyers because nobody trusted anybody and then the people that came in were crooks just like the rest of them and I just I, I just feel like I've been like taken out in a riptide or something you know what I mean I, I haven't written a song in months I haven't even I, I mean I used to carry a book around with me and I would write and sometimes I could write maybe three or four songs in a day I haven't written anything or thought of anything for months. And I thought, you know, I I had gotten past the point in life where I was just living day to day and struggling and like, you know, whoring myself out. And when when I got signed to Warner Brothers, I mean, I thought, this is it. I did it, I'm the champ, you know? But it's it's actually what it's done is it, I've lost my creativity. I've lost. I've lost it. I've given everything I could give. I looked at uh, making a record like making a salad. I go, you know, Janet Jackson. She just gives you lettuce, and she calls that a salad. But I give you the croutons and the shredded cabbage and the shredded lettuce. You know what I mean? And the really good dressing and the seasoning and stuff like that. I. I you know what I mean? I don't just call lettuce a, a salad. I think past that. And the only way to do that is to concentrate, concentrate, concentrate on it. And when you're concentrating on it like that, you can't possibly turn around and start dealing with these men that are twice your age that have fucked people all the way up and have got you by the balls now. What I'm trying to do is put together a show that goes with the, with the music. And the show is just, it's just colorful. All I could say is just, it's just a festival, it's festive. And I want people to go there and celebrate. And just get out of their minds with joy. Because there's so much fucked up shit out there in the world during the course of their day. And I just want them to, when they get inside, wherever they are, whatever club or hallway, I want them to just lose their minds. I just want them to just go off and say, fuck it.